the topic of which Europeans are the lightest is a very fascinating topic to me and to many other people interested in anthropology, uh, in genetics. It's just a very fascinating thing to think about. Well, it can be settled with this video. Uh, I, I think this video is very conclusively I uh, can very conclusively settle this topic on who, which Europeans are the lightest. And this video will use not anthropological data, but coloring allele frequencies in Europe. So the genetic data in order to determine who is the lightest, who is the darkest. So first, uh, let's begin with this SNP. This SNP is located within the HERC2 gene. Uh, it's implicated in hair, eye, and skin color. Here I included a little, um, a little description in eye color. This is in my study because I've done, I did two separate studies for eye color and hair color. Uh, for eye color, this SNP had a divergence of 0 0.34, which is a huge divergence. It's very, uh, very significant. It's the most significant of the SNPs, in fact. And the p-value is less than 0 0.001, but that, that doesn't tell you much. That doesn't tell you much. It's much lower than that, actually. Uh, the online calculator that I was using to find the p-value just had this as the lowest limit. So in reality, it's much lower. I just can't really figure it out because I don't want to do the calculation. I'm lazy. Uh, and in terms of hair color, the, the divergence of this SNP is 0 0.23. So once again, a very important SNP in both hair color and eye color. And in fact, the most important, the most decisive SNP in terms of hair color and eye color. There is no variation in the world that ma that matters more than this S&P in terms of eye color, hair color, you will not find anything that is more important. And uh, here's the map. Uh, so I used multiple, uh, multiple European populations as reference reference points for the map. Uh, what can we note here? Uh, the darkness of the Basques. It's interesting. Basques are a little bit darker than Iberians and French people, which is a um, pattern you will see in all of the SNPs mentioned in this video. Uh, this is a recurring pattern of Basques being darker. Uh, the North Caucasians are also pretty dark, darker than Greeks, darker than Italians, darker than Spaniards. Uh, Samis are relatively pretty dark compared to like Finnish people and Swedish people and Norwegians. Samis are quite significantly darker. They're on the level of like English people in terms of pigmentation. Um, the lightest population was uh, Finnish Northeast with ancestral allele frequency of 0 0.06. So that means uh, if Finnish Northeast people, uh, th there was only two groups of, pe of people in Finnish Northeast. One of them had uh, homogeneous two light alleles and one of them and the other one had heterogeneous one light one dark allele that means that only 12 percent would be the heterogeneous group that means 88 percent of finnish northeast would have blue eyes and blonde hair uh, just just judging from this one snp the darkest population were nanettes with ancestral allele frequency of 0 0.52 which is still super light by world standards like if you look at chinese or indians or sub-saharan africans they're much darker than this so the nanettes are the darkest out of these groups in Europe. Uh, however, they are still pretty light by world standards. Next is uh, this SNP with an OCA2. Now, OCA2 and HERC2, they kind of come together. Uh, they come, they are very close to each other. They're both on 15th chromosome. HERC2 comes right after OCA2. Uh, but this one is OCA2. And it is a little bit less important. It is a little, uh, the divergence for eye color, for example, is much lower. The divergence for hair color is also much lower. But as you can see, the divergence for hair color is higher than for eye color. So you could say that this SNP matters more for hair color than for eye color. Um, the p-value for both hair color and eye color divergence is less than 0 0.0001. Once again, I could not get this website to give me a precise like precise estimate. It doesn't give you anything more precise than 0 0.001, which is uh, extremely statistically significant. But, you know, I would like to have, I would like for it to be even more statistically. I've, I would like to uh, show you the exact number, but I just can't. I just can't show you the exact number. Anyway, it's very statistically significant. Now, looking at this map, looking at this map, you can see it kind of parallels the previous map uh, very strongly. It, it is almost like the exact same map, in fact. Uh, once again, you can see the Basques are 
uh, the darkest population of Western Europe. I'm not sure if that reflects anthropology. I'm not sure if anthropologically Basques are the darkest people in Western Europe. Maybe not. Uh, I don't imagine there would be very dark because I've seen a lot of people of Basque origin online and they had like blue eyes, green eyes. So I don't know if they are the darkest people in Western Europe. But if you just look at these SNPs, if you just look at the genetics, they certainly seem to be the darkest people in Western Europe. Um, what can we notice from this? We can notice the apparent lightness of Poles and Belarusians compared to Northern Russians. So if you look at Northern Russia, like in Vol Vologda or Southern Arhangelsk Oblast, you will see they are darker than Poles and Belarusians, which is interesting to me. Uh, another thing you can notice is the darkness of Karelians and Vepsians relative to the Finns. So this is Karelians, this is Vepsians, and they are darker than the Finnish people. Another thing you can notice is the relative darkness of the Basques. Once again, I, I talked about this. And the lightness of Kasa uh, Kazakhs, Don and Kuban. So this is Kuban, this is Don, and they are as light as Russians, as Ukrainians, as the rest of sort of Northern Europeans. Uh, and you, you can see on this map, they are also about as light as the rest of Russians and Ukrainians. They aren't specifically like exotic or outlier groups. They're pretty much, you know, typical Slavs in terms of pigmentation. Uh, another thing you can notice is the lightness of North Italians. And I didn't put this in my, I didn't put this on my text, but I should have. Uh, the lightness of the Balkans and Greece, like why are Greeks and Balkanites why do they have such low frequencies of the ancestral allele? That's very interesting. Uh, I, I missed that. I should have put that in my in my um, text over here on the right. So the lightest population overall are Estonians with ancestral allele frequency of 0 0.29. And the darkest population are Nenets with ancestral allele frequency of 0 0.62, which is once again still super light by world standards. Most of the world... Uh, like China, Japan, Sub-Saharan Africa, would have the ancestral allele frequency close to 1, would be 0 0.9, 0 0.8. So these nanets with their 0 0.62, they are still very light compared to the rest of uh, world populations. And thirdly, we arrive at this SNP in Tsirpon. Uh, it plays a role in eye color, hair color. The eye color divergence is 0 0.04 which is a pretty big divergence. It's uh, very uh, significant. It's one of the most significant SNPs aside from the Herc 2 Oka 2 region. Um, in fact, I wanted to include other SNPs, but I just couldn't find relative, uh, I, I couldn't find relevant SNPs in uh, Eurogene's K36 database. Like if I, if I could find other relative, uh, relevant SNPs, I would include them in this video, but this, these, these are the only three I found. Uh, that I could include, that I could make a video on. However, you see a pattern in all of these, and this is a pattern that's recurring. That means you will see the same pattern in any other SP that you look at. Uh, in TIR, um, IRF4, you will see the same exact pattern in all of these genes uh, because it's, uh, it reflects depigmentation, it reflects a historical event. Now, uh, the hair color divergence here is 0 0.08, which is higher than. Well, it's not higher. It's the lowest. It's the lowest of the three, but it's still a pretty significant divergence. So, tier one. Uh, looking at this map, here's some important details to note. The apparent lightness of East Europeans, very interesting, from Ukraine to Kazakhs to uh, they're the same as like Finnish people and Scandinavians, right? Uh, I was under the impression in, in, that East Europeans would be a little bit darker. But I guess we aren't. I guess we are about the same as Scandinavians in, in terms of um, ancestral allele frequencies in this gene. The darkness of Vepsians relative to Car uh, Karelians and Finns. So look at this dot, this dot right here, that's Vepsians. And they are a little bit darker than Karelians and Finns. I'm not sure what explains this. Uh, the apparent darkness of Samis. So look at the Samis here. They are pretty dark compared to the rest of... In fact, the Kola Samis are comparable to um, Basques, which is interesting. The darkness of Nagais relative to North Caucasians. So here are the Nagais, and here are the North Caucasians, and the Nagais are darker than the North Caucasians. The significant difference in Russian populations. So Russian from Pskov, which would be this dot, 
actually has the highest, uh, I mean, the lowest frequency of the ancestral allele. So at only 0 0.24. So Russians from Skov are the lightest of the people on this map. However, Russians from Perm, which is this dot right here, had a allele frequency of 0 0.3, which is much higher. And in fact, it is on the level of like Switzerland, Spain, uh, Romania. So it's it's pretty much more swarthy, I guess. Uh, and I think what explains this is the East Asian admixture that Russians from Perm have. And finally, the darkest population are Nenets with a frequency of 0 0.77. Here there are Nenets, which is somewhat light by global standards. Not, not, it's not that different from the rest of the world, but it is still a little bit somewhat light by world standards. Um, now, about the origin of this data used in this project. Data used in this project is entirely from the Eurogenes K36 calculator. Allele frequencies in reference populations of said calculator were multiplied by a vector of 36 coordinates representing K36 results in multiple European populations to simulate the allele frequencies in said populations. Uh, which means you can do this for any ethnicity you want, for any for any average K36 result you want. Outside of Europe too, you can do this for West Asia, for South India, for India, for whatever whatever, whatever population you want. So I left the code on GitHub. It is publicly available. You can create such maps for West Asia or other regions of the world using this code. This is the link to my GitHub, to, to the code on GitHub. It will also be in the description of this video. If you like this video, subscribe. Um, you want to see more such videos, leave a like, subscribe, uh, give your suggestions for next videos.